Hi, my name is Miguel Angel Munoz and I'm going to present my work Contextual Meritorious Dispatch and their Uncertain Supply, a joint work with Juan Miguel Morales and Salvador Pineda. We are all from the University of Malaga and the Basis Research Group in South Spain. Decision making under uncertainty plays an important role in the power system of today. Still today, one of the most common practices is the predict and optimize framework in order to tackle this type of decision making problems. In, this, uh, in these problems, we will have a, a data set of uh, contextual information or so an um, uncertain parameter, why? And this contextual information helps to explain this, uh, this uncertain parameter. We will use this data set as an input of a forecasting model. And then this forecasting model will produce an estimate of this uncertain parameter Y that we will use in our optimization problem and the deterministic version of this optimization problem to produce a final de decision set. This, of course, is an approximation of the true of stochastic, stochastic problem, sorry, but this uh, computationally less expensive and can be and uh, still in use. And this process, uh, the, I mean, the way in which we produce this uh, estimate can be improved if the forecasting model of, of this uh, step takes into account the optimization problem that are we going to consider that we are going to consider uh, we are going to demonstrate this in the context of a true state electricity market we consider a forward market that neglects the power transmission grid and it is modeled through an economic dispatch and we also consider a real-time market in which we this time consider a pipeline network model a simplified version so this is a demonstrative um, setup uh, just to, to prove the potential of, the, of this uh, methodology. The main source of uncertainty is produced by the unknown uh, demand, L, which uh, is uh, computed like the difference between the demand and the renewable production. This setup resembles the some European markets, so the lesson that we withdraw from here still can be applied to, to these markets. The forward market model, as we mentioned, is an economic dispatch, a very simple one in which uh, we have we want to minimize the total cost of the energy production. P are the, the generation uh, of, of the generator G. And we assume a linear relationship between the, the power and the cost. We have an energy balance in which we say that the total energy of the all, all generators should be equal to a point estimate. And uh, we have to enforce the, the generator capacity constraint. On the other hand, the, re the real-time market model try to minimize the regulating, regulating cost, the up and down regulating cost, uh, again, enforcing the generator constraint. Uh, and also uh, with some reserve capacities. And uh, here with these two constraints, we model a pipeline network grid. This line is a balance, energy balance in each node, in which we say that the total uh, energy production of each uh, generator in each on, on this node should be equal to the total the net aggregated net demand in that node plus the uh, power injected through the grid in that node. Also, we have some network constraints um, regarding um, um, lines uh, capacity. The predict and optimize framework in this context will proceed as follows. We have this uh, historical data set where we have uh, samples of this uh, of this true historic of this true demand, net demand, and this contextual information, and we use it to uh, to produce uh, an estimate 
that usually minimize the mean square error. And with this estimate, we put it into an economic dispatch to produce the, the decision variables. That uh, the decision variable that are the generation, the level of generation of each generator. So our, our target is to improve this procedure and in, so that we learn the estimate as a linear function of the contextual information in this way. And we're learning, we want to consider both the forward and real-time market problems. So we want to learn this, but considering the objective function, which is minimizing the total cost. More specifically, we consider uh, that we have available as feature this uh, estimate that minimizes the mean square error. This is our only feature. And we have this linear model that produces an enhanced uh, point estimate that minimizes the cost. So the goal, our goal is how to learn these uh, two variables that uh, represent our policy, these two cues. We can do that through this contextual meritorial dispatch model, PMC, which combines the forward market and real-time market constraints with some modifications. We add the I's, uh, I index, which is uh, in order to minimize the total cost over the training set of n samples. And we combine the objective function of both the forward and real time or real uh, time markets. Here we have uh, again the, the balance, the energy balance, and we have included that this point forecast uh, should be equal to a linear relationship and a fin policy uh, based on a forecast that we have available that minimize the mean square error, for example. Here we have again the up and down regulation constraints. Uh, we have here the constraints that regarding the pipeline network in which uh, we have here the true value. So through this true value and this forecast, we are able to map this over and we are able to map this policy to learn these cues that we will leverage, leverage to produce the, the enhanced uh, point estimate in order to minimize this total cost. We also added these uh, merit order constraints with enforced that the generator should be activated based on, uh, on their cost. So the cheaper generator are activated first and then the more expensive and so on and so forth. This is uh, enforced through this binary variable. So this problem becomes a mixed integer uh, linear programming that we can solve with commercial solvers. We're going to demonstrate, uh, illustrate this model, the performance of this model in this toy sample. We have two generators and one uh, aggregated uh, net demand on this node. Also, we have a line with uh, some capacity constraint, 30 megawatts, and this line has an infinite capacity. So we have that the generator one is cheaper than generator two, uh, but is less flexible. So it's more expensive. Regulating with generator one is more expensive. The up and down costs are higher or lower. So the, it's in, in turn, we will use, always use generator two when regulating. Uh, we have available this uh, forecast that minimize the mean square error. And as we mentioned before, we use this forecast as our only feature. Uh, we have this joint distribution, this joint probability distribution in which if the forecast is uh, 25, our uh, true uh, net aggregated net demand will be given by an uniform distribution like this. Um, the other way, if the, if the point forecast is 35, 35, our uniform distribution is going to vary between another pulse. 
Uh, after computing our point estimate through our model, our uh, enhanced model, we show that the minimizer of the mean square error is not the best because here we we represent the uh, estimate that we have computed and here we have the cost improvement that we achieved through this estimate and we demonstrate that uh, we achieve an increased uh, and an improved uh, cost reduction through this point estimate that we have computed through our model. Um, also, it's important to note that uh, our model is able to take into account uh, the network constraints. So our point forecast is uh, limited here to 30 instead of going from 30 to 40 um, the mean square error the mean square, mean square error minimized will be 35 our point forecast limits to to 30 in order to achieve uh, and to reduce the regulation cost up and down the up and down regulation cost and achieve an enhanced improvement And we demonstrate the performance of, uh, of our model in a more realistic case study in which we consider the stylized and unstylized un European pipeline neighbor model. We consider 28 nodes, one per country, and two types of technologies in each node, one base and one peak and dispatchable generator. And we withdraw the, we obtain the line and generator capacity from this report in which uh, they present a model of the European network. And we obtain historical data of demand and renewables from the Ensoi Transparency Platform. We compute the aggregated demand uh, of the whole system uh, after uh, processing this data. And we use different training of this set to produce average results. As this uh, system is quite um, complex, it's, but it's more complex than the one that we use in the toy example, we also leverage, leverage some clustering techniques in order to enhance the results in the, produced by our model. So we use a K mean algorithm in order to produce several clusters. So here we represent uh, the original point forecast and minimize the mean square error. And this will be the policy that we have computed in the original data set to produce our um, estimate, our enhanced estimate, but leveraging, leveraging this k-mean uh, clustering technique, we can produce several clusters in which we can compute different policies in order to increase the flexibility of our model and to uh, increase the, the results. Also, another different technique is to subsample the original data set through the k medoid algorithm in order to find the most representative samples of the data set. And with this, we achieve a reduction of the computational burden of the algorithm. This uh, we demonstrate here the numerical result that we have obtained. Uh, we use as bench benchmark the aggregated forecast uh, issued by the European TCO that we call FMC. And in, on this table on the left. We, re we represent the cost saving results improvements of our algorithm for different combination of the KAMI and KAMEDOID. So uh, and here we, uh, we represent the computational time for this very same combination of uh, KAMEDOIDs, KAMI, sorry, and KAMEDOIDs. So when we use one cluster computed through the KAMI, and we use the 100% of the samples, we achieve a 2.83% improvement. 
uh, but the time required for that is uh, not negligible. So it's uh, considerable, it's 2000 seconds. But if we sub sample this training set and we reduce the number of samples that we use in, in the in original data set from 100 just to 20% of the samples, we have a reduction of the improvement, but we achieve an increased, uh, but we achieve a huge reduction in the computational time. On the other hand, if we improve the number of clusters computed through the coming, we achieve a high uh, increase in the computational saving results. And also, interestingly, we achieve a computational time reduction in our algorithm, in the total time that takes to compute our algorithm through the whole uh, cluster. So with this, we, at, with, through the clustering technique on our algorithm, we achieve a substantial cost reduction with re respect to the, the benchmark. So to produce some conclusion, our model prescribed the net demand that a two-state electricity market should clear in order to minimize the expected total cost of the system. Our simulation showcased the benefit of using several clustering cluster techniques to face different operating point of the system, a numerical experiment conducted on a stylized model of the European electricity market revealed that the cost saving implied by this approach are well above 2%. With this, I finish my presentation. I'm happy to answer any question. And if you want to find out more, please check this preprint.